All right. Um, so thank you guys uh, for attending our talk. Um, so basically, in this talk, we're, we're going to be talking about an organization that both Ron and I uh, co-founded, and it's an organization called Zimbo Pi. Um, the reason why is because we're based out of Zimbabwe, in Harare specifically, and uh, we sort of uh, fused both uh, the Zimbabwean aspect and Python. Pi like the word Python has some negative connotations in Zimbabwe, so we just stick to using the Pi. Um, don't necessarily tell parents that we're teaching Python, but um, <laughs> so a bit about who we are. Um, the goal of Zimbo Pi is that we want to empower Zimbabwean girls with a skill that uh, we believe can, you know, help them in terms of getting better jobs or so, um, you know, getting more girls interested in technology, which is, as many of us know, is a male-dominated field. So, um, what we do with this is that we teach girls specifically, we try to work in um, underserved areas of the city in Harare right now. Uh, we work in community centers, we work very closely with the local government and also some other uh, nonprofit organizations in order to, we host uh, weekly club sessions in community centers and then um, we teach the girls there how to code in Python. Uh, we also work in universities, high schools, and tech hubs around Harare as well. So many of uh, the girls that we actually train will have never used a computer before. So one, uh, at first when we initially started the organization, we started teaching girls that were mainly in the wealthier suburbs of Harare. And then after that we just decided, okay, well let's bring some of the girls from, uh, you know, uh, the high density areas, which are the poorer areas of the city, and let's bring them in for a workshop and see how they fare with those girls as well. But then we were super surprised that even though these girls are living in the city, which is the capital city of our country, they had never actually held a computer before in their lives. And so there are many reasons for this. One of the reasons, I think, is that uh, we have public schools that just have very high volumes of students. And so only uh, a, a small portion of, of the students that actually attend those schools actually get to use the computer labs because the computers, they're not that many uh, computers and also uh, they, don't, they just don't have the, the hardware in order to get all the students to uh, go on computers and they will usually favor uh, the male students rather than the female students uh, when they are doing that. So. Right now, when we work in these high density areas, at the moment we uh, are operating out of two community centers we just launched in January in these areas. And one of them is in a place called Mfakwesi and the other one is a place called Highfield. And so we'll work in, that's an example of one of the community centers that's there. It's owned by the local government and it'll just be a building that's just not being used but it's it's supposed to be a, a hub for the, for the community, for the people that are living there, and so we'll operate out of those. And uh, it's been really great. We've had some partners come in and allowed us to bring laptops into those communities so that we've been able to have the girls have the, the, the hardware really close to them so that they don't really have to be traveling a lot in order to... Um, Actually, if they want to just practice uh, what they've learned, they can have it right there in their communities. So we've launched two uh, community center clubs. We also just launched a mentorship program that we focused on teaching university students um, that are girls studying ICT subjects. Um, and so in order to do this, uh, as I said earlier, we have laptops that we bring in and how we've been able to do that is we have some really great uh, partners and sponsors. GitHub is one of them. We work closely with the team from PyCon uh, Zimbabwe, some local NGOs as well that also help us, and the public high schools. Uh, another thing that we like to do is we work closely with social workers, so we understand that in some of the areas that, with some of the girls that we're teaching, uh, they will be coming from households that are not always super stable. So what we'll do is we'll bring in the social worker or a team um, of 
counselors so that once a week as well the girls uh, go through sort of uh, a time where they can share what's going on at home and if we see some uh, some a place where we can step in or any of our partners can step in we try to do that so for example um, the girls write letters uh, about what's going on in their home life and one of the our students actually wrote that she was she had just finished her O level so the first part of her program I think here in South Africa it's called matric and so she had finished that but she couldn't go on to finish the last two years of her school and so uh, because of school fees. She didn't have enough money to finish. And so we went with that letter and we approached one of our partners and were able to uh, get her help and the partners actually ended up paying for uh, her school fees to finish off the programs, which is really great. Um, so why did, we, why did we decide to teach Zimbabwean girls how to code and why is it important and significant? One of the first things is, is that we you know, LinkedIn did a survey and they said that one of the top 10 uh, in-demand, the actually the top 10, no, the first in-demand, no, <laughs> the top 10 most in-demand skills in 2017 will all involve coding. That's what they said. <laughs> and um, so it's a really, really important skill to, to learn and it's something that really even just now the keynote speaker was talking about how he taught himself and he didn't have to go to university as a straight path and so um, it's a way to be able to allow these girls to avoid maybe not all of them will have the opportunity to go to university because university is expensive and so giving them another pathway to be able to pull themselves out of poverty pull their families out of poverty or even just sparking that interest and giving them access to um, two things that they would never have access to like computers so we think that's super super important another thing is that we want to create a safe place to go so a lot of the times if girls just don't have anything to do sometimes they can't go home immediately after school we want to create a, a safe place where they can uh, you know build a sisterhood build a network of uh, other girls in their community and be learning something at the same time and then the third thing is that we believe that innovation leads to social change so we want the girls not only just to learn how to code but also how to think uh, creatively so that when they you know have the skill they can actually build things that uh, they can use to solve problems within their communities so we're trying to do that in the mentorship week as well Ron will talk about that a little bit, so I'm gonna actually transition to Ronald. Thank you. Yep. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, what we have done so far. Okay, so um, this picture over there is like uh, our first club, the first club that we we launched, we managed to launch. Okay. So uh, it's in an area called Mfakose, and as you can see, this place is much better than the other picture that Marlene um, showed us. Um, these are the girls that um, we are working with. Um, they're really great, really great. Um, I wish all of you could see them, but anyway, it's okay. Uh, and here, this one our official launch and we had people from the government and also um, uh, the headmaster of uh, the main school that's giving us uh, the students they had to come to the launch um, uh, that's one of the trainers uh, her name is Tari and uh, she's really great cool so um, I'm just going to show you a video of um, this um, <laughs> cute girl. Uh, what's your name? My name is Chelsea Trojan So Chelsea, what have you been? Uh, no, where are you right now, Chelsea? I'm at Zimbo Coding Club. And where do you live? I live in Papua City. And how old are you, Chelsea? I'm 17. And what have you, you been learning at Zimbo Pi? Uh, strings, mm -hmm. functions, it's variables, variables, that's good. <laughs> and have you been enjoying it? Yeah, I'm enjoying this club, yeah, it's a nice experience, like I must say, yeah. Okay, great, thank you. 
so cool, eh? Yeah, so um, these are the edges that we work with. And um, what we are mainly focusing on, we have been getting this question a lot, is um, these girls have never used a computer before. Uh, they barely know what the internet is besides WhatsApp. Um, so it's not like we are taking them to that level where they can be um, professional developers, but we want to change their mindset that computer science to them can be an option when they go to college. It's, um, it's something to, to, to have a look on. So um, one has never been exposed to a computer before and for some reason, let's say um, they managed to go to college or get a scholarship. It's zero to them for them to choose a computer science program because they have never used a computer before and they are just not confident about it. Yet, even if you go to accounting or being a lawyer, they all use computers these days. So we are starting from the basics of not just coding, but of how to use a computer. Then we transition to the level that um, they can start to code just a little bit, but the basics. Right, then um, these girls, these are the older girls, they are in universities. And um, our main goal with this program, we call it the Mentorship Week. What we do is uh, we get um, developers from um, all over the world. Uh, we just reach out through um, the social media and um, we get developers to come to, to Zim or even uh, mentor these girls remotely. And our target here is to bridge the academic world and the real world. So there is, um, there is a gap that the universities themselves, they can't solve it because they are academic. They are supposed to teach algorithms and math, but that's not how we solve uh, problems in real world. So what we do is we get developers and brainstorm on a project that's affecting the communities that they are in. So for example, in April, we're working on an e-commerce platform where we are linking um, farmers to vendors. So in Zim, we have got a lot of vendors and they are all in the streets, uh, which is making our, our streets very dirty. So we wanted to create an e-commerce platform that um, uh, farmers can sell their produce from their farms. Uh, this way they won't have uh, losses because if you get, let's say, 100 maize cobs, it doesn't mean that 100 people will come and buy them. Maybe today only 20 will buy them. And the rest, instead of taking it back home, they just throw it in the street, making our street dirty. So an e-commerce platform, a person will order from there and the farmer will know that uh, a person ordered 20 maize cobs and is just delivering uh, 20 maize cobs. So these are the type of the, the project that we are working on. And we are starting from, from the background to, to how now you are applying the code. So for myself personally, I have this notion that uh, the coding part is easy. Uh, but the project planning is difficult. So we start from them with uh, explaining the project and then splitting to the, the things that we need. So let's say we have a farmer. What we need from a farmer? Obviously, we need to know where the farmer is staying. We need to know the type of produce they are producing. So these are the type of things that we write to them. And now we draw frameworks to say um, if you want to know the address of the farmer and the location of the farmer. What are we going to use? Uh, how is the farmer going to be paid? Uh, for example, we have a cash crisis in Zim, so we need an online way of paying things. So these are the things that we start from, and now they can apply the code that they are learning in university to say um, if it is a Django application, 
uh, how are you writing the models to um, to to get the addresses and stuff like that. So it that way we are bridging the uh, the gap between the academic way and the real world. And what we are getting from there are um, girls making suggestions of uh, projects and willing to contribute to projects and all of the the work that we do is open source and um it's free to everyone uh so w in the process we are also stimulating the uh, open source community that's not uh popular in zim so yeah that's the mentorship week cool so yeah like uh in every project, you have challenges, but for a non-profit, that's there are serious challenges. Um, we have been struggling a lot, uh, mainly because of the situation in our country. So our country is under economic sanctions from uh, the U.S. and um, and U.K. and most companies that want to help us, they can't help us because of the sanctions. The sanctions, they are said they are targeted sanctions, meaning that they are specific to one person. But that person owns companies that own companies that own companies. So there is a process that the, the American company has to go through so that they make sure that we don't have any relationship um, with the person that is under sanctions and you know if you want to give money and you have to go through that process you just won't give the money you know so that's one of the 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 main challenges that we have and when we started the program we we were relying on volunteers people that would uh, take their time to go and teach the girls for free but well the country is struggling and one day the person gets a job and you just say i won't be able to help you with that our volunteers are not paid um oh. and uh we have been struggling with uh with uh unpaid volunteers then um the hardware itself uh it's a raspberry pi is 35 dollars but for you to import it into zim you end up paying Ninety-five dollars, mm. I think ninety-five mm. dollars, and f this is just for for a Raspberry Pi, and you don't have a monitor, you don't have anything else, so that's a big challenge to get the hardware. But um, we managed to get a company that's selling us laptops for a hundred and fifty um, US dollars, but. Um, they need it in cash and we have a cash crisis we don't have the cash so uh it's it's been um, sorry okay um then getting mentors to to zim <sighs> it's it's a challenge firstly because um it's just like when i came here the first time last year uh, Cape Town, I googled, and the first thing that comes out of uh, how safe Cape Town is, is how much people die in Cape Town and stuff. <laughs> so when you get here, you're thinking that uh, you'll be seeing people lying around dead or something <laughs> like that. Mm. But uh, that's not how it is. So that's the situation with Zim. Uh, there is so much negative comments about the country, but it's not that bad. It is, but it's <laughs> not that bad. <laughs> so, so <laughs> yeah, it's difficult to get the mentors to the ground. And if we find people that are willing to volunteer, um, one of the directors of Zimbo Pi is an American, so he can be able to get developers uh, in America. But because of the time zone, uh, developers have to wake up maybe at 2 a.m. their time, which is like uh, 10 a.m., our time uh, so it's difficult to to coordinate the two so uh, what we are now doing is we speak at PyCons in Africa um, uh, so that we can get 
at least people from here, our time zone is the same and it's much cheaper for you to come to Zim and stuff like that. So um, those are the main challenges that uh, we have been facing and of course uh, the issue with the sponsors. Then our government is so corrupt. Um, there was a time that uh, we wanted to go into schools uh, to teach the girls for free and um, we got uh, this guy and he was so interested in a project so you are saying i will process everything for you and he just said but you have to pay me and i was like it's a non-profit so that's how it is and uh, it's so crazy so uh how can you help um we have t-shirts like uh these ones uh, you can buy them, t the the t-shirts. They are fifteen dollars <laughs> US, uh, which is yeah. like a hundred and fifty rands. Um, then, if you have an old laptop or uh, a laptop that you are not using anymore, you can donate it to to Zimbo Pi. Um, through ZimboPi.com, you can also make uh, online donations. Um, you can become a mentor. Please become a mentor. Our mm. next mentorship week will be next year in um, April. So if you are interested, if you want to come and see Zimbabwe and the Big Falls, that will be an opportunity and you'll be uh, doing uh, good things. So it's not just about technical things. You can also be part of the panelists um, sharing your experience as a developer just encouraging these girls uh, to, to get out there. You can also obviously uh, mentor the girls uh, remotely and um, I think that's the more easy options, but it's different uh, to be there and seeing how this is affecting the girls and the, the work that they are doing, it's, uh, it's just different. So um, yeah. Um, I think um, that's why you you can help. So why we need you? Obviously, our country is under very rough patch of economic things. So we need you. Um, also, um, as Africans, uh, I always break that Marlene, she is the first African woman and first African to be on the board of the PSF. I always <laughs> break about <laughs> that. So yeah, we need more women to get into tech. Uh, uh, then uh, we don't have as many developers as um, uh, people in America or in Europe, but here yeah, there is need for, for more developers than in the States because there is much to be done here. Um, we need more softwares. We need um, people to be interested in in being developers so yeah that's why we we, we basically need that and um, our country is beautiful despite what you hear in the news so beautiful as you can mm -hmm. see we brag we have big bows <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful so if you want an excuse to come to zim come for a mentorship week and i promise you it will be worth it uh, thank you so much for mm -hmm. your time and please visit uh, our website, simbopai.com. Uh, you get more information about us there and uh, mm -hmm. if you have questions, I think uh, this is the time to ask. Thank you. Yeah. Just a quick announcement.